Hello, random people on the internet, and especially a very hearty welcome to Right Wing RB. I wanted to take a moment to walk you through my deep resonance setup. Here's my crystal chamber. Here's my creation, just a simple room here. Um, you can see in here, this is one of the screenshots I showed you. This would be the other screenshot. So let me just talk you through how this works. I got a little bit of automation set up. Ender tank flowing into a uh, a Ender IO tank. I couldn't get the conduit coming directly out of the Ender tank into here. Automation working properly, so I had to throw a Ender IO tank in there in the interim. What I have here is a conduit connector that is set Redstone mode active to extract, of course, acceptance into here with a liquid monitor monitoring this. This liquid monitor is set to monitor this tank at a 44%. That's what I found the sweet spot. It's not perfect. You can't set it to 50% because there's a delay when redstone ticks to, uh, and that there's extra um, millibuckets of lava that goes in there. So right now it's set at 7,200. Um, I've I've uh, tested this. That seems to be the sweet spot for me is 4,400. So the lava goes in here. As long as this is full, it always keeps this full. You're doing it manually. That's perfectly fine. Um, that this is just error proof, a little bit more error proof, I should say. Uh, the smelter then, of course, is where we stick in our liquid. We, it then gets dumped into the tank. You see, I have roughly 6,000 millibuckets in there already, and it will create a, uh, a crystal out of that. Um, it comes in 83 or 100% quality as long as that lava is there. Uh, the purity, you see, it's just starting to uh, um, final, finalize. It'll stop at 85%. Uh, that's where we have filter material. Let me throw a little extra in there. And so this is purifying through this portion. These, of course, shared. You've already figured all that out. What I have back here, though, is let me grab my Yetta wrench here so I can filter this stuff out. All right, Yetta wrench. It's already set to conduit, uh, the the uh, pressurized fluid conduit. Um, I have this here as a manual setting. So let me go in here. I just uncheck this when I want to dump the liquid down. Uh, that's it. There's I could put a switch up here if I really wanted to, or down here somewhere. But I just do that manually. It dumps it in here, goes up into the, into the um, makes my crystallizer, I reach in there, take it out, all good. Crystallizing laser or infusing laser over here. Um, you've already figured all this out, not a problem. Uh, what I did was I put a chest back here. That catches my spent filter material anytime I create a, a, a uh, crystal. So um, it's a pretty straightforward setup. You had your pressurized fluid conduit out the front. I just hid mine in the back. It was a little bit harder to see. So there's a walk around. Um, this is powering everything, this power cell, uh, so I don't have to run conduits anywhere. Very handy. One of the one of your early episodes, you uh, bestowed the values of that, and I absolutely agree and, and like that. One other point I want to mention is that this here, this liquid monitor, needs to have this arrow uh, pointing forward. And, and uh, um, you can rotate it with the Yetta wrench, or I believe any wrench, but just make sure that's pointing down and to the front in the block you want to monitor, and that would be this one. So that's that. Let me go over here. This switch in here is a manual switch. Um, it's it's a manual override. That's all it is. I do have automation back here. Let me get this dense obsidian broken here. All right, so this here connects here. It just manually overrides, that's all. Um, so I've got my generator controller. Each one of these blocks handles 10,000 RF per tick. I have a 20,000 RF per tick crystal because I took the time with her, uh, with her farming uh, nether stars to increase that all the way up to 100%. It was my very first crystal I wanted to go for broke and uh, generates 20,000 RF. Way, way overkill. But I, because of that, I need two generators each handling 10,000 in order to pull in the 20,000 RF. It will error out if I don't have two of them. In fact, I can show that real quick. And if I flip the switch, It will say some crystals are too powerful for this size of the generator. Not a problem. So let's throw that in there. And then when I switch it on, you can see everything works just well. And of course, we're probably getting a lot of radiation. It's not too bad. 
not too bad. You really don't have to worry about it until you get into the you know tens of thousands. Um, you, the first effect, you, as you've seen, is hunger. But you notice I'm standing right here. I'm not getting much hunger right now. That's because it's so pure. It's a really nice setup. Over here, you notice the radiation drops way down. In case you can't see the top left, um, you see that a lot less. So, as I step back here, it becomes about the same. So that's about all I'm going to get. All right, so what I have back here is a chest. This is a pedestal. Pedestal isn't required, uh, but it's a nicety in that when it's spent, it will actually come in here and dump the, the uh, chest. And I believe if you have a, another full one in here, it'll dump the spent one into the chest, pull a new one, and place it back up here, thus mildly automating it. Very nice feature. I decided to try that in case I ever get to that point. Um, the other thing I have for power here is this is accepting. This is set to in. So this pulls it into my network. Um, it also charges this guy up. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It pulls in. This is the generator. Yeah, it'll, it'll pull into both of them. Okay. So uh, so this is the Ender IO's capacitor. It's 25 million RF. Uh, it, it's just big. This guy only has 4 million. So this gets it to other parts of my base, also over to that area over there. But ultimately, uh, it's just one really big, stupid block. Let me break this. There we go. Um, all right. So uh, the other bit of automation, you've already done this, is my, this is only pointed to my vibrant capacitor, roughly around 80%, um, whatever. So that's my primary automation. This is just an override, uh, just, just pointing that out. So that's pretty much it. Just wanted to uh, to give you a little bit of subtlety. This is all the uh, the the tricky stuff to just get properly set up. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is that you had aut turned on your dumping from the top tank into the bottom tank uh, with your with your pressurized fluid conduit that you ran over here. You left it turned on while you were making new stuff. So what was happening is it was making new impure liquid and also still dumping it into your already purified, thus reducing your purity. Be careful with that. You just want to make sure you turn off. After you've dumped it all in there, turn it off immediately. So just pointing that out, it's a common mistake and uh, want to make sure that you get the highest purity as you possibly can. So anyway, that should have gone up to 85, but whatever. Um, oh, one other point is the strength, is the how much capacity, how much R total RF is in that crystal? Jack that all the way up. Get 100% if you possibly can, because, because of course, that'll mean less crystals you have to make. Of course, balance that with how expensive that portion is. Uh, the efficiency portion is how um, how much RF per tick. I don't need 20,000 RF per tick. I don't think very many people do. That's a lot of power. So what you can do is have a longer lasting crystal by having it generate less RF per tick. Um, right now, this this might generate, uh, you know, I don't know, 100, 200 RF. That might not be bad if you jack it up to, you know, 20, 30 percent efficiency while having all the rest really high. You'll have a clean crystal, very little, um, very little uh, radiation, and it'll last a really long time. And it you can kind of balance how much RF per tick. So anyway, that's all I have, and uh, have a great day. Thanks for listening.